You know Star Citizen makes a lot of money, releases a lot of ships, and attracts a lot of space nerds. But have you ever seen that all happen in one place? The Intergalactic Aerospace Expo is one of the biggest fundraising events of the year for Star Citizen's development, but believe it or not, you can experience the whole thing, including almost every ship in the game, entirely for free, for 13 days, starting November 18th. And there are a lot of cool details you may miss if you don't keep an eye out. So let's talk about what to expect at the event and how you can play Star Citizen with access to dozens of ships for free. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. So to sum it up, this event is a moving celebration of flying ships, both in lore and out. In lore, this means showroom floors that change out periodically, the occasional controversy, and a few episodes of the amazing Top Gun-like ship show featuring Jax McCleary. Though this year they are working some lore magic on account of his journey to Pyro last year, could not be continued just yet. You know what I mean. Out of the lore, we get access to the event for free, along with a code that shows up on the company website that you can redeem for access to free ships on various days. We'll talk about that in a moment, but one of the great parts of the expo is the marketing. I haven't done a video on this, but the studio is really good at marketing. Too good at marketing. Like marketing seems to supersede a lot of other things to their detriment. But we always get either a nice episodic display or a single short video with an enjoyable story set in the lore. Of course, like I said, it is marketing, but the videos themselves are a joy to watch. Now back to those ship days. The event itself runs for around 13 days every year. The event is traveling, so while this year it is taking its third stay at New Babbage, in the future, this could draw players from all across the star systems in the game to congregate in the same system for two weeks. It could be a very special week for players in the future, and a pretty cool chance to see a single star system's economy go 150%, but that day is still far away. Each day during the event is dedicated to several manufacturers or one major manufacturer. Each of these manufacturers will grant access to their ships for you to try out, and some will announce new ships, both in the making and available for you to fly right away. This year we expect to see a new ship from Drake revealed by the CEO of the company in lore, and a possible medical variant of a player favorite. There may be more unannounced ships, but if you'd like to see the ones that we actually are expecting right now, I talked about that on last week's video. Of course, also out of lore, this is a huge opportunity for sales. I've made several videos about ship sales, how much money you should spend on this game, and why the game is funded in this way. If you're interested in Star Citizen, you should know it's not a finished game. It is still in both active development and funding, and it is very slow. And ship sales like this do a lot to keep the lights on. Now, while these ship sales may talk about discounts on certain skins, items, or maybe even some game packages that are brought down to the normal $45 buy-in price, these are also sales for ships that are not usually available to be bought. A form of FOMO. Rule of thumb is you should earn these ships in-game, but many want to actually fund the game or just not have to re-earn those ships after a progress wipe, which do happen occasionally. Whether it's a specific ship you've always wanted, a skin you need to have for your ship, or some other in-game item which are, again, all earnable in-game, this is the time to take advantage of the lower prices and raised availability. This may also apply to game packages too, as I mentioned. If you wanted to get the game or decide after testing it out that you'd like to, starter packages with better ships like the Avenger or the Pisces might be discounted, and you may find a lower price than $45. Okay, now that we've gone over what IAE is, this is how you can get into play and how to make the most of your days playing for free. Like I said before, the free play period is from November 18th to November 30th. Any person with an account on the website will have access to the full game, as well as a number of free ships depending on which manufacturers are featured on which day. Ultimately, you'll get access to over 100 completely unique ships to try out. Now what you do during this free week will stay with your account if you decide you'd like to buy the game later. I personally suggest you use these free fly periods as demo times to try the game out and see how much it progresses between each free period. This strategy will continually introduce you to the new game systems and give you plenty of time to try the game out and think it over if you really want to get so involved with such a meandering game in development. 
I have a video about this on the channel because I think people should try for free and get a feel for the game before they actually jump in. But once you've gone to the website and use the referral code to start your free profile, whenever that may be, you'll be able to enter a specific code for the event on the website and after you've downloaded the launcher, simply log into the game. If you don't have a referral, you can also use the link in this video description to be taken straight to the signup page. Once you've gotten into the game, the most important thing to know is when you should specifically play. We aren't all space nerds with seven days a week to fly spaceships, so let's break it down real quick which ships are on which days. The first day is going to be Drake, who has not one but two confirmed ships coming soon, one of which will be flyable for the first time during this event. There also may be another unannounced Drake ship coming, but you have to check my other video to learn more. Drake has a lot of great combat and utility ships to try out, including one of the most popular, the Cutlass Black. This day will probably be worth your time. Day 2 will be Origin, the BMW of Star Citizen. Luxury makers focusing on touring and exploration, but also dabbling a little bit in combat and racing. Day 3 will be Aegis Dynamics, the go-to maker for combat craft, depending on who you ask. Aegis is slick and futuristic, but features designs clearly inspired by today. If you like fighting, or massive ships that look kinda like the Nostromo, today is the day to check out. Day 4 are the Alien Manufacturers all much more exotic and expensive than their counterparts. These ships are mostly combat focused, but definitely bring some of their own unique designs based on the alien race's lore. Day 5 is Anvil Aerospace, another military provider of ships, but also several other interesting non-combat ships. The Pisces is one of the most popular starter ships, which you'll be able to try that day. We may also see an unannounced variant of the Pisces on this day too. On day 6 you'll see Argo and Greycat who are more industrial and cargo focused, along with Kruger and Consolidated Outlands who are smaller manufacturers, though we definitely deserve more ships from both those companies. On day 7 we'll see Tumbrel, who mainly focuses on ground vehicles like buggies and tanks, and my favorite manufacturer, Crusader Industries. They've historically focused on moving things like cargo data and people, but we've seen a bomber and a gunship from them as well, I guess moving bombs and guns. So you'll get a decent balance out of the small amount of ships from them. Day 8 is Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern, or MISC. Another industrial manufacturer with a huge selection of ships that lean outside of that segment of the game. This would be a good chance to try out the only current single person mining ship if you're interested in that kind of gameplay. Day 8 is RSI the original space manufacturer in lore, and one with many wide-ranging ships. Pirates might be interested in the Interdicting Mantis, and players in general might like to try out the multi-crew constellation to take out with some friends. The final four days will be a grab bag of different opportunities to see other ships, items, and the popular best-in-show ships that were voted on by the community earlier this year. It's a long amount of time to spend just looking at spaceships, and I definitely suggest seeing just a few of the days that really matter to you. And while this in-game event also doubles as a huge chance for the studio to sell ships and items to fund the development, do not feel pressured or like you are missing out if you choose not to. Everything is earnable in-game, and players from all over are always willing to help new players if they would like to experience more. At the end of all of this, there's a lot more to learn about the game than just the available ships and how much they might cost. I host this channel to try and present the inner workings of Star Citizen and other space games in interesting ways. If you like that and want to learn more, or just want something a little bit different, consider subscribing. I try to keep the quality high. And if you want to go a bit further and support us, I also post exclusive videos every month for YouTube, Twitch, and Patreon supporters. And if you want a chance to talk back and forth, consider checking out my live streams right here four times a week. I hope you learned something new on this quick news video, and I'll catch you in the next.